Hello friends, <clears throat> today we will go through the topic who am I? In the earlier videos we already uh, went through the four antakarnas mind, consciousness, intellect and ego. Okay, so these are the four antakarnas. What is mind? A sequence of thoughts. Mind. Mind is made up of thoughts. Consciousness is the light with which we are aware of what is going around us. Okay? That's consciousness. And what is intellect? It is the agent of intelligence within us. And this is the equipment through which we take some decisions uh, in our life okay based on the information provided by the mind the mind gets the information from the senses the senses gets it from the external world okay so that is the sequence so now the fourth one is the ego when i say ego it is not in the bad sense Okay. Ego is the sense of I-ness, I, the sense of I within every being is what is called as ego. It can act in different ways. Okay, It can uh, act rudely. Yeah? It can behave uh, in a crazy manner. So the concept of I and my are together the I in its original or natural state uh, will can be put in a graph like a zero okay zero but when the I evolves in a negative manner within the beings it can project itself as uh, egoistic okay so uh, that's the person whom we refer to as being egoistic and uh, this I further extends itself to other objects for example my car my house when someone comes and touches my car I get angry okay so there is a link unseen link between me or the sense of I and my object okay this is the link if someone is coming and taking some others bicycle and going away for example will we be worried no but if they come and touch our cycle then I know that they are touching my cycle okay the sense of minus so that is my the inner circle or the uh, inner core of that is the I sense. Okay, so this I is within everyone. When someone asks me, Who are you? I can say, I'm Ramesh. That's a good answer. But again, if they are asking, Who are you in uh, reality? I will start to give explanations by citing my characteristics. Okay, I am Ramesh and this is me. Okay, let's uh, take an example of a pen. So, let's say that this pen is asking the question, who am I to itself? Then it can give many answers to itself. I have a cap. I have that the cap is blue in color. I'm 15 centimeters tall. Okay. I can write. I can be used for this purpose. And so on, so on. I'm made of plastic. These are all the characteristics of the pen. And they are in no way related to the actual question of who am I? If this pen is asking that question to itself, who am I? 
the answers I have a cap I can write are not relevant yeah because they mean a different thing these are all the characteristics of a pen not what the pen in essence is just like that when someone is asking me who am I and if I am going to give the answers like I am Ramesh Ramesh is the name given by my parents to me I have a black hair yeah it is true that yeah I have a black hair I am this much tall and I weigh this much I have a body these are all characteristics of myself and they are in no way related to the question who am I this should be very clear okay the sense of I-ness which we all have is the only constant in the world the, the rest is all ever changing when I was in my school the sense of I was the same as I uh, as that um, compared to when I was in my college or in my school or even now taking my the sense of I-ness over a period of time the only thing which has not changed is the sense of I even my body has changed my mind has changed I have matured yeah maybe I will talk uh, in a very matured manner but the sense of I the one who is experiencing this through the window of I has not changed at all yeah so in the Hindu Upanishads uh, they always talk about the self okay self is the Atman yeah? this Atman is experiencing life through this sense of I-ness within every being in Bhagavad Gita I think there is also a uh, verse I am the I something like that I am the I capital I yeah, as uh, Lord Krishna says so what I am trying to say is this sense of I which we all have is what we are discussing now okay? so if we Ramana Maharishi used to say that one has to inquire within himself who am I and try to get to the source of that question who am I we, we might try to find the answer but the problem is who is asking the question who am I do you see the logic one is asking the question who am I and someone is trying to find the answer It is very hard unless you are really, really into it. Uh, we have to find the source of the question itself. Who am I? Who is asking that question? That is where we have to focus. Okay? So, the sense of I-ness which we all have need not be very, uh, very prominent. One can cut a piece of log without having the sense of I. Yeah, just cut, that's all. But when someone uh, who is very egoistic and so on, when they are cutting the same log, they can start to think, uh, I, I belong to this family and am I supposed to be doing this work? And so, so in each and every acts which we carry out in our daily life, this sense of I-ness yeah, need uh, can be can be made minimal. That is possible without too much of thinking or thought. Uh, we can just let's say carry on with our with our daily work without making an image of ourselves. Okay, it is it is just an image. Who are we in reality? 
what we think who we are is just an image okay so we, we that is not necessarily needed that is what i'm trying to say so uh, ramana magarishi used to talk a lot about uh, who am i and there is also an interesting uh, phrase which they quote when we realize who we are in reality you will not be there or in other words if you have to find out who you really are then you should not exist that's another way of uh, putting it out the logic behind is uh i'll, I'll give an example uh, in my childhood uh we were three siblings elder sister myself and younger sister and my parents were in a far away town and when they come for school holidays uh there will be a big fight in our family three children one mother and everyone wants to lie close to her in the night while sleeping okay so we will have turns so two will get the chance to sleep okay next to uh mom the point is in case for many reasons if it is my turn on that particular day and if i sleep earlier if i feel sleepy and if i have slept i might have slept next to my mom but the next day when i wake up the first feeling which i get is a sense of sorrow or sadness why i wanted to lie next to my mom which i have done but i'm not i was not able to enjoy it as i was not there i was not aware yeah me in my childhood mind yeah i was not there people might say yeah you you were the one who were who was sleeping yesterday but i was not there just take that example and if you project it in real uh experience of knowing the i I'll, i'll give another example of my real experience of uh when i had that had this uh on a so this happened seven years back i was uh, about to have a haircut and i was in a saloon suddenly i lost the consciousness of my body okay now i'm just trying to explain what happened at that time i was not having the conscious uh, consciousness of my body the consciousness the awareness which we all have that remains the same okay mind stops to function that means there are there, there were no thoughts whatsoever okay so i'm just saying mind did not exist the intellect yeah the intellect which we all have is currently accessed by our minds intellect is the place where information is stored and uh, they are uh, referred to whenever there is a need in that experience what i had was i the sense of i is existing in the form of the intellect or knowledge or in other words the eye sensation which we all have has its form as the all knowing knowledge which means the feeling was at the feeling at that time was i know everything yeah i know everything so there was no need 
for me to uh, ask a question and try to find out why how and there was nothing there was no urge or anything yeah I know everything that was the sensation and then there was a huge space it was just me and a vast space I was not aware of anybody else okay so and this lasted maybe for a few minutes and then I came back uh, to the normal reality and then started to wonder the mind jumps in trying to question oh okay this is what happened how uh, first this happened and so on so on so what I'm trying to say is the sensation which we all have as I in this waking state yeah this I gets transformed into its real nature when you know the true essence that when you know the true self this I transforms into its true nature what is a true nature it is knowledge itself uh, in my case uh, it was just being alone uh, just alone um, aloneness with a huge space so since the mind did not exist in that state even when I was there I was not able to uh, appreciate or feel happy or joyful nothing okay only after coming back to this waking state normal consciousness I was able to recollect what happened and then I'm let's say uh, saying all those stories now you see so mine was not there but I would not say that it was totally dead maybe it was just uh, watching it that's the in a still manner okay and without that I will not be able to recollect also you see what I mean so it was stored somewhere in some memory and it is uh, I'm able to recount it now so um, self-realization is all about knowing the essence of who we really are we are not this body we have a body okay we in Bhagavad Gita there are many verses that are talking about the self or the Atman okay so this real I sense which we all have if you go penetrate deeper and deeper then it will be just the plain awareness which this investigation of who am I question will lead one to the very essence of our true nature see you in the next video then.